All right, we're gonna tackle some harder gas calculations using the properties we've been working with and the gas laws that relate them. So the relationships between say pressure and volume or volume and temperature, how they change with each other and how we can calculate what one of those properties will become when a change happens. So, so far we've been looking at three gas laws, Boyle's Law, Charles Law, and Gay-Lussac's Law that relate pressure and volume, volume and temperature, and pressure and temperature respectively. In this video, we're going to add in another gas law. We're also going to tackle some tougher problems that are a little bit harder to figure out um, because it's not going to be so straightforward about this is your pressure, this is your volume, this is your temperature that we're plugging in. So let's first look at these couple down here. If V1 equals 1.5 liters, N1 equals 0 0.8 moles, and N2 equals 0 0.4 moles, calculate V2 in liters. So liters is a volume. That's what our V is standing for here. Okay, but this N is new, and so is this unit here, moles, M-O-L. Okay, so we should probably address that. So amount of a gas is going to be something we're adding in here, and it's different than volume. Volume is about how much space the gas takes up. Amount is about how much chemical there is, how much of that gas there are, how many particles. Now, the amount of particles in a gas is huge. It is not so large, and so we're not even going to try and get close to tackling numbers like that. It's just not convenient. It's not efficient. It's not effective for doing these calculations. So if we're not going to count individual particles of a gas, then we have to find some way to kind of represent a larger number of particles with an easier number. You can think of it like um, if you were going on a hike. You wouldn't measure the distance you traveled in millimeters or inches. You would probably do you know, kilometers or miles. Um, a lot of people also refer to um, what we're going to talk about here as we need a, a, the chemist dozen. You know, when we say the word dozen, we think 12, 12 of something, donuts, eggs, you know, something like that. So we need some new unit that covers just a huge number of particles. So rather than you know, needing to say you're going to buy 36 eggs, you can say three dozen eggs. OK, so the new unit that we use to tackle a huge number of particles is called the mole. So our amount is going to be measured in moles, All right? This can be abbreviated as M-O-L, okay? Just like how meter is M, grams is G, uh, liters is big L, moles is M-O-L. Um, since M was kind of already taken, we can't just use M. Um, so that's kind of the best we could go with. In our gas law calculations, the variable that we use to represent amount that's measured in moles is N. Okay, so N1 would be like an amount of a gas before a change happens, and N2 would be an amount of gas after a change happens. So the relationship between volume, V, and amount, N, is a new gas law we call Avogadro's law. Avogadro's law, named for the guy that figured out the relationship and also pretty much established what a mole is, or at least the number of particles that we kind of use um, to count um, through moles. Okay, so it can be a little bit tough because it's like, okay, why N for an amount? It's like, was A already taken? Or I guess M was probably already taken for mass, but like, eh, why N? So that's kind of annoying, but um, it, Avogadro's law is the only gas law that involves N that we're going to cover for now. So at least it will be a little bit easier to pick out because of that. You just got to remember that N stands for amount, and then we measure that amount in moles. All right, and moles are just a way of counting a very large number of particles with a much smaller, easier number. It's just a new unit we're introducing here. We can think of Avogadro's law pretty simply with something like a balloon. There's my balloon. So I've got some gas particles in there. If I go and inflate the balloon a little bit more, 
that's going to have more gas particles. So what I would expect the balloon to be bigger with more gas particles in there. And the more I add in N, more amount, more gas particles, more moles of gas, the bigger the balloon should get. Okay, so as volume and amount should be connected, as N increases, V increases. As amount increases, my volume should increase as well. Okay, and we should also expect that to go the other way. If I were to turn this around and I took a balloon and let the air out more and more, okay, my amount of gas is going down and I would expect the volume to go down too. All right, so just like Charles Law and Gay Lussac's law, these properties follow each other. They go the same direction. If one increases, the other increases. If one decreases, the other must be decreasing too. Okay? And just like the other gas laws, we can do this mathematically. We can figure out what the new volume or amount of the gas will be based on you know, some stuff that we know, like the original conditions, the original volume and amount, okay, and either a new amount or a new volume of the gas. So in problem one, we'd be looking for a new volume. And in problem two, we'd be looking for a new amount. So we need an equation that can relate this. So first, let's do number one. We're going to look at V2 as being the thing we're trying to calculate. So I want something, 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 na, 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 equals V2. Okay, that's my goal. And I want to make sure that my equation has Vs and Ns in it. There are other gas laws that have something where I can solve for V2, but if it's got a pressure in there, like a P, I'm not going to be able to use that because I have no pressures to plug in here. Pressure is being held constant in this case. Okay, so let's see if I can find that on our reference sheet. So I've got Boyle's Law. I've got Charles' Law. I've got Gay-Lussac's Law. The new gas law I need, Avogadro's Law, is right down here. Okay, and I've got two versions just like all the others where I can either find a new volume like a V2 or I can find a new amount, like an N2 here, okay? So if I'm trying to find a new volume, those, I need V1 times N2 divided by N1. If I'm finding a new amount, I need N1 times V2 divided by V1. All right, don't forget that these are being multiplied. Right, so I believe in the first one I'm looking for a new volume, so I need V1 times N2 divided by N1, and then this will probably come up in the next problem. So let's flip back. So in order to calculate the answer here to get my V2, I need V1 times N2 divided by N1. All right, now this is getting a little cramped, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to erase this problem down here for a second just so we can get a little more space. We'll bring that back later. Okay. Let's get my purple back. All right, V1 times N2 divided by N1. So all I have to do is replace these with the numbers I want to plug in here. So I need to replace V1 with 1.5. 1.5. I'm going to leave the units out just to make it a little bit simpler. I'm going to replace N2 with my new amount, which is 0 0.4. Again, I'm going to drop the units just to make the math a little bit easier to see. And then N1, I am plugging in 0 0.8 moles. All right, so if I take 1.5 times 0.4 divided by 0.8, I 
I should get my answer. So I would get a calculator out and try it for yourself. Give yourself a second to kind of plug things in and see what we get. All right, what you should have gotten and what I got, I just plugged it into my calculator here, is 0 0.75. And since we're looking for a new volume, our unit should be the same unit of volume that we started with. So we started with liters, we're going to end with liters. All right, so this is my V2, 0 0.75. All right, let's look at another example, but let's uh, kick it up a notch. So we now have Avogadro's law that we can use just like any other gas laws. And if I wanted to, I could use the other version of the equation, but I think the rest of the time in this video is better spent looking at some of these tougher ones. Okay, where we start getting into word problems like this. Can of spray paint starts at a pressure of 4.83 atmospheres and a temperature of 293 Kelvin. The temperature of the can drops to 250 Kelvin, so a student uses Gay-Lussac's law to calculate the new pressure inside the can. It turns out to be 4.12 atmospheres. We want to match the variables below to the given data. So if they're using Gay-Lussac's law, we've got to have pressures and temperatures, and there's got to be a before the change and after the change. So remember, big P stands for pressure, big T stands for temperature, and the one stands for before a change, two stands for after the change. So if I'm not just given what P1, T1, P2, and T2 are, you know, I'm going to have to figure it out from what the problem tells me. So a pressure of 4.83 atmospheres. Okay, well, pressure is a P, big P. All right, and this is what we're starting at. We start with a pressure of 4.8 atmospheres. So this is going to be my P1. This is going to be my original pressure. All right, a temperature of 293 Kelvin. Okay, so we're still starting with this. So this is going to be a T1. Okay, a temperature of 293 Kelvin is our T1. The temperature of the can drops to 250 Kelvin. So again, Temperature, okay, and this is a change. It drops to 250 Kelvin, so this is now T2. It's a new temperature, and they use Gay-Lussac's law to calculate the new pressure inside the can, like this right here. Okay, so if this is the new pressure, pressure is P, and new variable is going to be 2. All right. So if we were to line this up in an equation or something like that, our P1 would be 4.83 atmospheres. It's the first pressure we come across before the change happens. Okay, our T1 is our original temperature, 293 Kelvin, before anything goes and changes. All right. When our temperature does change, it drops to 250 Kelvin. That's our new temperature, our T2. And then our pressure changes as well. We would calculate that to be 4.12 atmospheres. 4.12 atm. So that's our new pressure. So that's our P2. Okay. So. If we had to calculate this ourselves, we would first have to make sure we know what P1 is going to be and T1 is going to be and T2 is going to be so we can plug those numbers in to get P2. So you have to be careful where you put these numbers. you got to make sure they land in the right place in the right equation. So let's look at an example that's not already worked out for us and try and figure it out. Okay. A car's airbag is inflated to a volume of 10 liters. The temperature inside the car is originally 285 Kelvin, but after sitting in the hot sun, the temperature increases to 305 Kelvin. Change colors here. Okay, so just as I read through this, I see volume. Okay, I see temperature. I see temperature. Okay, and I'm going to be looking for a new volume here. Okay, so wherever I see volume, that's going to be a V. Wherever I see a temperature, that's going to be a T. Temperature is originally this, T. Okay, another temperature, T. 
and I'm looking for a V. All right. Okay, well, our car's airbag is inflated to a volume of 10 liters. Well, it looks like nothing exciting has happened yet in the problem, so we're going to call that V1. That's our original volume. Da, 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 da. The temperature inside the car is originally, okay, so before any change. So this is T1. Our temperature is originally 285K. Okay, and then after sitting in the hot sun, the temperature increases. A change has happened. So this temperature here, 305 Kelvin, is going to be a new temperature. So that's going to be called T2. If we're looking for a new volume here, okay, after the change, that's going to be V2. Oops. Fix that. V2. All right. So from there, I just need to plug stuff in. Now, of course, I do need the right gas law equation. So I have to go check my reference sheet. Okay. Based on my V's and T's, this looks like Charles Law to me. And if you couldn't tell right off the bat, of course, just go look at your reference sheet. All of it's right there for you. Charles Law. It's always good to kind of double check yourself and make sure you're right, even if you think you got it. All right. So if I want to calculate the new volume of gas in the airbag, I want something to be equal to V2. I want an equation that looks something like this. Okay, I'm going to do it in a different color just so it kind of stands out better. So I want something, something, something equals V2. If you go check a reference sheet, and you find your Charles law where V2 is on its own, something like this. Well, we should get an equation something like this. V1 times T2 divided by T1 equals our V2. All right, and all I have to do is plug that stuff in and then calculate it. Okay, so my V1 was 10 liters. Right there. So where my V1 is, I'm gonna plug it in. Oop. I don't know why it's moving stuff around. That's not good. Okay, where my V1 was, I'm going to put in 10, 10 liters. Okay, that's going to be times. I don't know why everything keeps shifting over. Okay, well, uh, don't hey, run away from me. There we go. Okay. We can start fresh. That's okay. So 10 times, this was supposed to be my T2. So that was 305K. divided by my T1, which is 285K. And I'm just dropping units to make it a little bit easier to see everything. All right, so if I take 10 times 305 divided by 285, I should get my V2. So I take 10, oops, 10 times 305 divided by 285, and I get 10.7-ish. 10.7. I started my volume in liters, so I want to end in liters. And this is going to be my answer. Okay. So really, the math is no different than the other gas law problems we've been doing. The only difference here is we've got to be able to find which numbers to put where. And all you have to do to figure do that is to look for, is it volume or in temperature, or is it pressure and temperature? Is it volume and amount? Is it pressure and uh, in volume? And then kind of Put them in the right spots. Is this an original volume or a new volume? Is this a an original pressure or a new pressure? And that can help you figure out whether it's going to be a P1 or a P2 or a V1 or a V2. All right. From there, it's just making sure you plug stuff in your calculator right. But depending on how you round, these numbers might come out a little bit different. So you might have like 10.702 or 10.701 or something like that. Um, don't kind of sweat the small stuff. You'll look for the closest answer that kind of best fits or, or you know, know that if I'm you know, kind of looking at your answer and grading, I can tell how the math should turn out and I'm not going to be real picky about decimal points. Usually with these problems, one or two decimal points is usually good.
sometimes in my examples I'll show more, but it's not really a big deal. Okay, well, hopefully this makes it a little bit easier to tackle some of these tougher problems. We're looking for you know, the same kind of stuff we have been doing. It's just now you have to look at the problem and figure out which gas law fits best and use it. Plug in the numbers based on what you got here, like your pressure, your volume, your new pressure. You're looking for a new volume. So this 760 could be your original pressure, P1. This volume could be your original volume, V1. Then we have our change happen. Okay, so we get a new pressure. That would be our P2. And we're looking for a new volume. That would be our V2. So we want something, something, something equals V2, which we've been getting that a lot. Okay, but this time we want an equation that has P's and V's in it. I would recommend using Boyle's law for this. Okay, and then finding a version of Boyle's law where we've got V2 alone which might look something like this. P1, V1, divided by P2. All right, so we just have to plug in 760, where P1 is, plug in 500, where our V1 is, and plug in 1,500, where our P2 is. Then you just calculate it out and see what you get for your answer. 